as I saw it, I stopped and bent down and looked at it. Uh, I could say, what is this? So I just said, it's, this might be something good, but Mif was behind me about 200 meters. And we looked and it was just a few little fragments. They didn't look particularly smart. But you never know, and you always hope there's going to be something more under the ground. And we were lucky. I became so happy. I didn't, I went to the camp, I even I didn't do that. I didn't eat anything, I didn't eat anything. It was just the only joy it was in my heart. It was a skull, so it was, you know, really exciting. But at that point, there wasn't enough of it to say whether it was um, the same species as Lucy or not. 25 years after they did it for the first time, Meave Leakey's team assembled a skull that they believed to be about three million years old. This time, there had to be no mistakes. So we spent the next year um, repairing all the cracks and taking all the rock off it and um, making it in, into the situation where we could start study, studying it. Because you can't study it, obviously, until, it, until it's been reconstructed and um, is as close as possible to its original shape. To help her, she called in Dr. Fred Spohr, an expert in anatomy from University College London. He uses a technique called computed tomography to analyze the inner structure of fossil bones. This helps him work out how a fossil fits together. The first thing they noticed was the skull had a small brain, just like Lucy. So it clearly would not resurrect the discredited big brain theory. Then came a key discovery. It was to do with how the spine entered the head. In apes, the spine always enters the head at the back of the skull. It's a typical characteristic of four-legged animals. But in the millions of years since the end of the planet of the apes, our spines have shifted to enter our head underneath the skull. This helps us to walk upright. It's one of the reasons we walk on two legs and apes don't. <laughs> 